Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah Dawn. And I wanna ask you a question that you may or may not identify with. Did you have an overambitious dad who projected his perfectionism onto you and unrealistic standards? Or a mother who was so busy dealing with her emotions that she neglected yours? If you did, you end up hiding your flaws and mistakes by being non-confrontational. You keep the peace and appease everyone around you because subconsciously you were given messages as a child that your feelings didn't matter, that you aren't okay just as you are. You molded yourself into exactly what your father wanted and kept your mother happy to not cause upset to her already emotionally and dramatic life. Later on, you'll subconsciously attract partners like your mother. Well, if this sounds familiar, welcome to my channel. It's nice to meet you. And today I'm going to be talking about concepts from the book, Mr. Nice Guy. Now on the outside, you're just a normal dude, decent job, good family, do the right thing, but you don't get enough recognition or sex or both. You can't seem to make a woman happy, but deep down, all you want is the approval of others. And you continue to sacrifice for people in hopes that they'll do the same for you, but it never really ends up being fair. You probably fail to live up to your full potential. You disassociate from other men and masculine energy and create situations where you don't have deep intimacy with women, especially. Does this ring a bell? Now I'm not here to throw an egg on your face or kick you when you're down. So don't click away until you watch till the end. I'm here to give you some truth and potentially help you understand how this happened and what to do about it. So here's a synopsis of the book called No More Mr. Nice Guy, which I read and I thought it was phenomenal. When I first heard about the book, I thought the title seemed slightly odd. Is it a pickup book or another questionable title from the Manosphere? The answer is no. This book is a great how-to guide for any male, especially any male born after 1975. How to meet your needs, be more personally assertive, gain more confidence and self-esteem, and you know, really enjoy greater emotional freedom and fulfillment and integrity in your life. And what's even more appealing is if you're a woman in a relationship with a Mr. Nice Guy, the book is perfect for you as well. So if you're not Mr. Nice Guy, then you've probably met him before. He never rocks the boat or gets upset and always insists that everything is fine. He prides himself on being friendly and considers himself a giver. He'll do anything to make a woman happy as so long as she's happy, he's happy. Happy wife, happy life. He works hard to be nice, hoping it will pay off in the form of an easy life and loving relationships. But what do you know? He's frustrated. He's put in the friend zone. Though he tries to be everything that a woman wants, he struggles with relationships. Either he's alone or can't seem to find his partner or keep his partner happy. So he tries to be even nicer, which doesn't help. Dr. Glover offers another approach to the problem. What if Mr. Nice Guy's actions come from misguided beliefs about women, himself, and the role in society? After realizing many men struggle with the same problem, Glover comes, Glov, Glover comes up with nice guy syndrome and offers plenty of practices to help shake this way of living to have a happier, more fulfilling life. So what's the problem? So according to Glover, the problem for nice guy begins in childhood. Very early on in life, he develops a belief that he is not good enough because his parents did not validate his emotional experience or just plain out and validated him in general. Scared of rejection, he becomes the person he believes others want him to be. Lives his life trying to please others, hide his flaws, and avoid conflict. His needs aren't his priority. Instead, he looks for approval by trying to fix other people's problems. If he can fix others and be their hero, that's very esteeming, right? Yeah, wrong. This comes with a host of issues. By avoiding conflict, he can often act deceptive, manipulative, or passive aggressive. His fear of being found imperfect also makes him secretive. Withholding of information or overly controlling, but it's really just deep insecurity. The biggest problem is that his niceness is not authentic. It's done with strings attached, kind of a quid pro quo. There is a hidden contract involved. I'm being nice 
to you so that you'll give me attention, affection, and acceptance. A sentiment that reflects the true motivation of a nice guy. And this attitude drives away women because we can sense it. Women re don't respond to nice guys because their actions are not attractive. A nice guy is afraid to be himself. He doesn't want or put himself out there to be rejected or criticized. He's scared of saying or doing the wrong things, so he does nothing. He gives the woman all the power in the relationship and goes along with whatever she wants. And then she leaves you for Mr. Bad Boy. Women are attracted to a man who can take charge and be a leader, who knows himself, what he wants, and is willing to go for it. A man who owns his power and isn't afraid to, you know, live on his own terms. Without realizing it, the nice guy becomes a character that women cannot bond with because they can sense a deep unhappiness within himself. He will insist that everything's okay because he's afraid of any minor disruption or his abandonment kicks in and he thinks she's going to leave me so I'll just stay quiet. But here's the deal. A woman looks at a man who's confused or wanting to gain validation from outside sources as weak. She thinks to herself, if I have to be the one always making decisions or leading in the relationship or comforting him, then who's going to protect me? If you see yourself in any of this, here are the top six practices that were mentioned in the book that might help you stop being Mr. Nice Guy. So one, reclaim your personal power and masculinity. Perhaps you were forced to give up some of your personal power in childhood circumstances due to your controlling father or vindictive mother. As an adult, you've locked yourself into a career or a relationship that you don't really want to be in, making you feel frustrated, helpless, and resentful. You feel more out of control when you approach life with the coping techniques that you developed as a child, because quite frankly, you weren't ta taught how to just be accepted for who you are. So how do you reclaim your personal power? For starters, you start believing you can deal with unpleasant situations. You recognize that you are human and experience fear from time to time, but you also believe in your ability to overcome obstacles. Be honest with yourself about your needs, your weaknesses, and your desires. You gotta learn how to share your experiences and your opinions, and it's okay if expressing your value leads to someone leaving you. Those who care about you will value your feelings and thoughts, even if they disagree. And accept that you can't influence or manage how others feel about you. You might experience rejection and criticism at some point, but you have to embrace that. It's part of your masculinity. Number two, have higher standards and don't accept secondhand behavior. Let's say you're in a group of friends and one of these friends starts joking about you and starts laughing at you, not with you. Classic male friendship, right? Some of them. But consider if your friend kept making jokes about you every time you met each other. Jokes turn from being lighthearted and fun to outright disrespectful. It's time to say something about it. So stop being so nice and raise your standards for yourself and others. The girl you like plays hard to get, know your limits. You should cut her off if she potentially falls below your standards. If your wife isn't having sex with you, well then maybe it's because you're too nice and aren't showing your value through your actions. Apply these standards to everything in your life. Do not tolerate any behavior that crosses the line or disrespects you. Number three, stop agreeing so much. Studies show that people consider those who always agree with others less intelligent and confident. There were times when I wasn't even sure what I believed because, well, I didn't want to have a different opinion than my parents because oftentimes I was criticized and not being loved as a child by your parents because you disagree so that's a pretty huge precedent for that behavior to continue into adulthood. A child just learns to go along with things because a child can't even comprehend their parent not loving them. It's too painful to have your parents abandon you because you disagree, so it's easier to keep quiet. How you break that is, is that you practice having debate or disagreeing with people on purpose. You'll learn what your belief systems are when you start having this type of discord. Watch YouTubes or different TikToks and start forming your own opinions on relationships, politics, whatever it is that you're 
passionate about. Practice disagreeing with others on purpose. Start with little things, for example. If you enjoyed a movie and your friend didn't, challenge them to a debate and ask why they think it was disappointing. Come up with a counter argument and think through your answers, belief systems, and values. I know it sounds really deep, but it's practice. Number four, don't hold back. Nice guys hold back even when they want to say something. That's because they avoid conflict and people not liking them seems really scary. Don't rock the boat, right? They also just like showing their real nature. So they filter through their thoughts because it keeps them safe from criticism, but it's actually quite deceptive. It shows a lack of authenticity and people in general love being around men who are unapologetic about their opinions. Okay, within reason, like don't be an ass. But look at Joe Rogan, Jordan Peterson, David Goggins. Unapologetic men are just taking names and kicking ass. When they want to say something, they say it. Want to do something, go for it. Don't be afraid of what others will think of you. If you look at like the classic bad boy, he doesn't care about what others think of him. He says whatever the hell he thinks. You're not here to make everyone like you. And in fact, that's usually a perfect example of nice guy syndrome. And number five, the importance of boundaries. If you are a recovering nice guy, boundaries might be your most critical factor. Limits are particularly relevant when considering your relationships with women. Nice guys often believe that being overtly tolerant and accepting everything their partner does are beneficial strategies for the relationship. Don't rock the boat. I recently spoke with a man who was not having sex with his wife. He was married and it was basically dried up, but he's afraid to rock the boat and say anything for fear of blowing up his life. Do you see the problem here? Boundaries mean respect and women desire a partner who sets limits. By setting boundaries in your life, it will in fact improve your chances with a woman because she'll either rise to the occasion or she won't. And wouldn't you want to know versus live a life of resentment because your needs are never met? Number six, make your needs a priority. Only you are responsible for your needs. Stop blaming and start acting. One of the most unattractive qualities of the incel community is that there is a lack of emotional accountability. Stop acting like a victim. Instead, be thankful for difficult situations and look at them as a chance to grow as a person and learn for future occasions. Women might have hurt you, but you allowed that hurt to take place. Maybe because you exhibited some of these traits that I spoke about earlier. Some circumstances might be too challenging or time consuming to manage. So you gotta be willing to just walk away from events and people. Don't try to make an unhealthy relationship work. Just end it and find somebody more suitable for you. The bottom line, no matter if you are currently a recovering nice guy, a chronic people pleaser, dating or married to a nice guy, or just someone who finds the topic interesting, if you implement some of these suggestions, you might finally learn to accept yourself exactly as you are and end this infinite cycle of feeling dependent on other people's approval. Develop integrity and honesty and create a more intimate and satisfying sexual relationship with the woman in your life. But what do you think about Mr. Nice Guy? Leave your opinion in the comment section and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss an upload. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.